Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Prepper Geek, Jesse, back once again. Um, be a little mad scientist kind of thing here right now going on just because, eh, I guess the free time, the wife and kids are in Boston. So, I'm in the kitchen and I'm getting ready to make some fire starters. I think I, I showed these when I showed my day bag a few days, uh, yesterday, in fact. Yesterday as filming could be before that when I actually get around to uploading. So, bear in mind, when I did my day bag video, I showed my fire starters in the Ziploc bag. Well, today I'm making some. Just, I've got probably another 18 of them already made, but um, the in-laws want some since they're up at camp. And I figured I would just make them their own batch and kind of record the video. And I'm doing something a little different with these. Normally I do, um, mine are very basic. There's videos all over the internet about mine. Um, because I got them off the internet. <laughs> um, it's candle wax, dryer lint, and an egg carton. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You take the dryer lint, put it in the egg, put it in the, where the egg sits in the egg carton, put candle wax over it till it fills it up nice and even, and then cut them out once they dry. And you have instant fire starters. They burn for like 10 minutes. They work phenomenally well. And I absolutely love them. So, I've modified the recipe a little bit. Um already uh, previous previous attempts and I'm gonna try to change it a little bit more today and I thought I'd film it and see how the results go now what I use for mine because it's cheap I use tea lights I need a package of these at Walmart for about 250 I think um, two packages does about 36 or one package does about 36 to 45 maybe 50 fire starters and that's the only thing I'm paying for. Dryer lint's free. Egg cartons are free. That's all I'm paying for. They're very simple to use. Very simple to do. I use my knife. Cut the side of the tin out. Grab it by the wick. Like so. And pull. Candle comes out. Hold it and pull again. The wick comes out. And then the only thing you got left is that little metal tab on the bottom. Stick your knife under it. Pull it out. Toss it. You just left with a brick of wax. Dunk that in a pan. I have a dedicated pan that I use for this because, well, it's candle wax. It's hard to get out of a pan. So I dedicated an old camp pan to it. These things melt really quick. They don't take long to melt at all. Um, I've already got, I'm, I'm actually using a selfie stick to hold my camera up because it works really, really well. So let me take a selfie. Um, <laughs> as you can see, Got a pan of wax. That's the one I just put in there, and it's pretty much thoroughly melted. I don't know if you guys can see that. Look at that. It's gone just that quick. No more, no more candle. Let me prop myself back up here. Now, the way I'm going to try to modify this is I'm going to try to take, <clears throat> excuse me, and mix the lint in with the wax to make kind of a concoction, I guess. And then I'm going to try to put the whole thing, one by one, into the egg crates. The wax still being wet and still being hot and melted will permeate the egg crate and still make it work. So, um, I'll be right back. I need my dryer lint, apparently. Now, as I said, dryer lint is free. Egg cartons are free. I eat eggs, we use a dryer. There we go. Even if you don't have a dryer in your house, if you go to the laundromat, nobody empties those damn dryer lint traps. Go around and empty a couple of them. You end up with a big bag of dryer lint. And be careful with this, it is flammable. So if you're using like a propane stove, something like that, be careful. I mean, on anything that's gas, because it will catch on fire quickly. Now, this is kind of the experimentation phase of this, I suppose. Because I have to break this up into chunks and dip it in and then get it in the wax. I don't want to just throw big clods in there and then try to mix it up with a fork. I don't know how well it's going to work. So, and you want, the, you know, the more drier lint you have, you know, the higher your lint to wax ratio, I suppose, the better, in theory, it will burn. Um, I don't know how that exactly how the ratio affects burn times 
Um, like I said, the way I've been doing it, they burn for about 10 minutes. So we're going to try this method, and when they're done dry, which takes a few hours, I usually put them in the freezer to dry, just because they do take a while to cool and dry completely, especially once the wax permeates the egg crate, or the egg carton, it takes a little while. So once they're cool and dry, I'll take them outside and see how long one of them burns for. Hopefully I get at least 10 minutes, because that's kind of what I aimed for with the last batch that I made. And that was a fairly easy to achieve result, actually. It didn't take that much work to get there. This actually doesn't work that bad. So far this seems to be going fairly well. Once the lint gets permeated with the wax, it actually breaks up a lot nicer. And don't worry about anything in the dryer lint. Like, there's a couple of wood shavings in mine. You know, because I work, I do stuff, so there's going to be weird stuff in the lint sometimes. But, as long as it's nothing, you know, chemically hazardous, it should be fine. Yeah, I think I can do more lint than that. Like I said, this is very experimental, so I'm going in gentle baby steps here. I'm not adding a ton of anything all at once. Um, I didn't even use that many of the tea lights because I didn't want to burn up all my stash if this doesn't work very good. And at 250 it doesn't really much matter. But, you know, I want to still get a good product out of this. It's not like I'm selling them or anything like that, but one of the biggest reasons I use tea lights as opposed to, you know, because we have a wax burner in the house that we use, you know, for like an air freshener, and we do have candles all around the house, but everything we have around the house like that is scented, and I try to do everything from the prepper mindset, and the scented wax, obviously, makes a scent. So in a survival situation, it could theoretically give away your position. You know, scent, I mean, obviously they'll smell fire, but fire doesn't smell like lemon sugar cookies or whatever, whatever we happen to be using in the wax burner. So we're going to try this. And like I said, the tea lights being unscented, you don't get that human scent as much. So this is actually mixing up really, really well. Let me show you guys this. Oh, there we go. So this is mixing up fairly well. The dryer lint's fairly well permeated. Um, you don't want it to be completely dryer lint and no wax because it won't quite work that well. Um, it'll burn up way too fast. I think I can probably safely add even a little more wax. And do this, if you're doing this at home on the stove like I am, which, yeah, I guess most of us would be, right? Um, do it on, like, medium heat. I crank the burner up to high to get the wax melted, melting. Once it melts, then I just turn it down, crank it down to about medium or so. Um, this is on an electric range. Um, unfortunately, I hate electric ranges, but it's what we have here, so that's what I live with. Um, and just kind of keep it there because it'll keep the wax melted, but it won't over melt it, it won't overheat it. So you don't have to worry about things bursting into flames or any of that nonsense. Ooh, this is really good dryer lint. I don't know what this came off of. Oh, not very cotton ballish. You know, and I suppose if you wanted to be truly 100% puritan about doing this, you could use cotton balls. Um, hell, I don't see a point. Um, <laughs> I mean, dryer lint is free, cotton balls cost money, you know, and I try to do everything as cheaply as I can, and generally the closer to free I get, the happier I am. See, like, I have to turn this down now because it's starting to burn a little bit. Not like the lint's catching on fire, but it's just too hot. So, and you can tell it'll start smoking a little bit when it gets too hot. So... I'm going to keep it hot enough to keep the wax melted, but not hot enough to burn anything or catch the lint on fire, because I'm sure right now this would be an interesting fire. And hard to explain to the, the fire department, too, I'm sure. But 
I think we've got pretty decent consistency there. There's a lot, we have a lot of blue jeans and a lot of black stuff, so it tends to be very black and purple. Um, <laughs> and once this, this is kind of at the consistency of about blackberry jam, it looks like, with some very strong clumping in it. So I think I'm about ready. I'm going to put some of this in an egg cart. And I'm going to find my egg cartons. Now, as I said, this is a smaller batch, so I'm only using a one, de one dozen carton as opposed to the 18 pack I normally use. Um, again, experimental. I have no idea how this is going to work at all. I have no idea really much about this beyond the fact that in theory it should work about the same if not a little bit better just because the dryer line is much more permeated with wax and it will leak through the cardboard a little bit so keep that in mind as you're setting these in where they belong uh, I'm going to try a few different uh, lint levels I guess you know, levels of lint in the egg carton as I'm doing this to see how it works um, everything from very full to just kind of full I have a feeling this might work better because of the permeation um, but I don't thoroughly know yet so here's to mad scientists stuff looks really nasty so if anyone catches you cooking this they're gonna think you're making something really screwed up well, just tell me you're trying to start a fire slowly <laughs> hopefully though this works out as well as the other ones did I don't really see why it would not but stranger things have happened to be honest with you Another thing when you're doing this, if you're holding your egg crate like I am, bear in mind that it does get pretty floppy. So get yourself something to set it on. I've got my I've got a butter cookie tin here that I keep my you know, my candles and stuff in for this purpose so that the wife doesn't burn them all up. Um, find something to set it on. It'll make your life much easier in the end. Because you don't want to burn your hands. And while some people may be into hot wax out there, it's not really my thing. And if it's not yours, don't hold on to it the entire time you're filling the things with wax because it will end poorly, I am sure. And that is without even having to experience firsthand how poorly it will end. I guess I was, you know, I was going to mix these up as opposed to how much was in each one. But I ended up being fairly consistent unintentionally. I think it's because I've done these so many times. So I'm left with a little bit of wax left over. I don't know if you can see that. I can't really tip it to a much better point, but I've got a little bit of wax left over. Not a lot, a little bit. Looks like blackberry juice. <laughs> so when you're done, you have this that right there. Now what I do with that, as I said, I want it to dry a little bit faster. I don't like necessarily, I, I don't like waiting. I'm impatient. I, I'm not going to lie to you there. Um, very hot on the bottom. Very not comfortable to grab. I'm going to put mine in my freezer and in about an hour, I would say at the most, it'll be done and ready to go. So that's about it. I mean, like I said, I'll do another video in a little while once these are all done, seeing how well they burn. So. I guess I'll just add the append that to the end of this one. So here's where I'm going to insert the intermission. All right, looks like the results are in. I just took the uh, um, smallest of the fire starters that I made downstairs, put it in the fire pit, and let it burn. See what time I could get out of it. Actually, burned for 12 minutes. Uh, it's two minutes over my last ones, and that was the smallest of them. The bigger ones should obviously burn for more, so I'm looking probably about 15 minutes out of those fire starters. I'm going to call that a win, I think. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's definitely a win. So, uh, 
yeah, I think that's definitely the way I'm going to be making it from now on. And if you choose to make some yourself, let me know what your results are. Let me know how it turns out, how long of a burn you get. And uh, as always, you know, comment, like, subscribe, thumbs up, all that jazz. Let me know what you think about anything. You know, talk to me, say something, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, stay prepared.